Als zijn mensen, hallo weer, ik loop hulle sit, um, nou hierdie link op die groepen. en uh, Jochenan, ik ga jou probeer inkry, um, op ons, op ons deel, <coughs> en ik hoop ek kry dit raag, ek het om genooi, uh, dit mag, ah, sy, ah, sy boekwaar, hallo, Hallo Penny, hoe gaan dit? Excuse, ek weet, ek het jou nou rondgenie, ek word tyd, ek word mos meer gevoerd dier goed, jy weet mos, jy ken jy bloed. Yes, yes, nee, ek het hier gesit, vir die volle, wat was het een uur, of bykie meer as een uur, ek het alles gehoor, en alles beaam, wat jy... Ok, ons gaan een bykie sikkel, ons ons sien jou sign is aan en af, en... Gaan een bykie sikkel, maar kom ons probeer, jy het in tussentijd een video kree gemaakt in die tyd dat jou broer vreselik aangegaan het met die politiek en uh, ja, so, daar is een video kree wat ek nou gesien het in die WhatsApp jy, ges, jy gemaakt het, so dit is goed, maar ek, ek sou baie graag daarom nou dat die mense so een levendige uitsending ook kan beleef van die mijn af, ek besef daar is beperkt tyd tot sy uh, en dit is beperkt tot een klein area op die mijn Maar goed, misschien kan jy hulle net groet en so idee gee van, van waar ons staan. Die mens is nog bezig om aan lijn te kom. Daar is nog net 160, by ander video was al 1200. So ons is net bezig vir die mense die link te stuur. Maar ek en jy kom aan tussentijd gorrel. Ons is mis goed daarmee. Um, jy, jy, jy het mis die examens in Ferdinand Postma op die selle manier afgelegd. <laughs> die, die gorrel, die gorrel examen. Ja, die gorrel. <laughs> yes, ach Penny, ja, ek, ek kan vir julle sê, uh, dit is een prachtige dag hier, ek loop sonder een baie rond, en uh, somer is op pad, en daarmee saam die blommiekies, nou Makkolandse blommiekies is absoluut prachtig, uh, en hier achter my is ons sprenkies wat julle van tyd tot tyd sien, en ek kan vir julle sê, ons is hard aan die werk, ons mense is gelukkig, dat is goeie, uh, gemoedere by allemaal, ons is positief, as ek bykie nader loop, kan ek julle net wees, dat ons beide lijnen draai, die, da- die, uh, die panne draai, die tonne word gegooi, die fin die daar achter werk, so ons het een uh, tyd terug besluit om nie vir die oomlik uh, groter te gaan nie, die uitdaging of die, uh, wat sal ek sê, die versoeking is daar gereel, om groter en groter te gaan, en natuurlijk mens wil dit doen, maar ek het net gesê, kom ons staan vast, kom ons uh, kry ons beide panne, ons twee lijne, op, uh, op productie, op vol productie, en op die oomlik skop ons af, 7 uur in die ochend, en ons werk tot 11 uur in die aand, daar is twee skofte, ons kyk na die moendlikheid van een derde skof, wat beteken ons panne gaan draai, 24 uur dag, vir 6 daal weer, en uh, weet het is lekker, het is lekker om jou tyd te behaal, het is lekker om te sien dat jou uh, toerusting werk, soos het veronderstel het om te werk, maar natuurlijk, dit is eisters, dit is klippe, die goed breek, en nou is die belangrike ding, ons is ons tanne, het ons tanne hier gesnui, Penny, vir die laaste 7 maande, hierdie lijne, wil ons gaan neerpuseer, hierdie goed, wil ons gaan neersit, by nie net 2, 3, 4, 5 nie, maar by 10 en 20 ander myne. Amen. En op hierdie manier, Amen. gaan ons die aspiraties van ons mense, en die behoeftes van een groter groep, as net ons eie gesinne, wat jy nou nog gesê het, natuurlijk, ons moet daar vir ons gesinne wees, maar ons moet daar wees vir ons volk, ons moet daar wees vir ons mense, en ons kan dit doen, dier uh, op hierdie manier productief te wees op baie myne. Goed, uh, miskien kan ons net in die weier context praat van myn weese. Jy het natuurlijk, jy sal wat redelijk wijd lees en beweeg ook. Um, jy kom nou terug van Engeland af, waar jy weer by jou kinders uh, een grade plechtigheid was, nogal al vier, uh, weer eens baie geluk daarvoor. Uh, dit is obviously hulle ooms uh, breins wat, wat wel daar die ding gedoen het. Uh, <laughs> ek is baie blij dat jy weer die mooi gehoor het. Ja, Penny, ek moet, ek moet een bykie wegloop van die actie al, want ek kan nie mooi hoor nie, maar ek is nou verder weg, ek kan jou hoor. Ek is baie blij dat jy nie daar gehoor het nie, Boete. 
uh, lijkt mij even verdwijzen nou dan. Uh, goed, um, oké. Okay. Rondom, rondom die, die 50.000, 52.000, 53.000 mensen op ons groep, is niet altijd een geluk uh, rondom die moeilijkheidsgraad van mijn wezen in die weiercontext van Zuid-Afrika. Nee, ons weet, die, die DMR in die staat besit die minerale rechten of houdt het als custodian voor die gemoor, gewone mensen van die land. Maar van wie corruptie natuurlijk binnen staatsgeleerderen uh, is dit baie moeilijk om noodwendig baie vinnig dier al die red type te snij. En dit verklaar natuurlijk waarom ons bestaande permitte oorkoop of, of uh, daarvoor onderhandel. Wil jy misschien iets daar deel rondom die uitbreiding en dat het zo so noodzakelijk was om een model succesvol te vestig, maar ook die problematiek rondom net eenvoudig uitbreiding en op groter skaal te begin myn en die uitdagings wat daarmee gepaard gaan, nie net vanuit de capital expenditure, een kapitale bestedingsperspectief nie, maar ook op jou mannenkracht en beschikbaarheid van goede arbeid in dies meer. Ja, Oké, okay, Penny, je hebt nu gepraat van die DMR. Je, dus uit de aard van die zaken, het departement waarmee ons moet samenwerken. En uh, zonder om uh, te veel goed hier te zeggen, uh, ons weet uh, hoe dit gaat in ieder land van ons. Ons weet dat als jij om die mensen betaalt, dan, dan uh, krijg je niet wat je nodig hebt. Nie. En ons kan uit die aard van die zaken niet zo so bezig gaan doen. Nie. Dit maakt het, dit maakt het moeilijk. Ons het ook een situatie waar een vergadering leidt tot de volgende vergadering en al wat bespreek wordt uiteindelijk uh, bij jullie vergaderings waar dan niet con 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 conclusie bereik is nie, waar besluiten geneem wordt nie, is dat jy kom oor een om weer oor een week of twee vergadering te So dit is vers, uh, groot frustratie, maar ons maak vordering en ons maak vordering om ons kinders van die Heere het, nie, uh, van die Heere is en hy ons in staat stel om dier hierdie moeilijke situaties te, te navigate. En uiteindelijk die succes te proe wat ons al reeds hier proe. Uh, Oké, okay, dan heb je nog gepraat van die, van die weier, Penny. Uh, ja, die duplicering van een systeem en mijn wat ons nou reeds, wil ik zeggen, succesvol mijn. Ja, ons ligt niet voor jullie niet met andere woorden. Ons moet voor jullie sê, ons is nog niet op die groot diamanten nie. En het maakt een groot verschil as natuurlijk als je die grote stenen krijgt. Op die oomlik kry ons baie stenen. Ek plaas, ek plaas net hier en daar weer eens een voorbeeld van wat ons uit die kruise krijgt. So ja, die stenen is hier, maar hulle, die gemiddelde steengroote is nog onder een karaat. Die oomlik wanneer jij voor een karaat gaan, dan spring jou, jou uh, inkomsten uit die aard van die zaak geweldig. Maar ons moet die grote printjes zien. Ons is niet in een situatie waar ons nou onmiddellijk maand tot maand onder die druk is om, uh, om, om ons kosten te betalen, en meer en daarom om onmiddellijk boeken moet balanceren. nie. Alhoewel ons goeie bezigheid doen, maar ons sien die groter printie. Ons uh, betaal die schoolgeld wat nodig is om hierdie visie te, realis te, te, te realiseren. En dit betekent werkelijk waar dat ons myne in groot getalle gaan oorneem en dat ons uh, dit succesvol gaan bestuur, met ons mensen, met die boeren en met die namas wat in hierdie area is en bly. En ek kan het klaar zien. ons het een voorbeeld hier voor ons, van Buffelsbank, wat al reeds succesvol is. Uh, so Penny, sê dit iets, uh, antwoord het jou vraag? Ja, baie, baie ek, ek is blij dat jy raak uh, weer eens aan een corruptie wat, wat absoluut rijf is in Zuid-Afrika en daarvoor, we sitting in a situation where we must uh, have a balance all the time between going forward and have fast growth but at the same time have a solid foundation that nobody can attack your rights or, or your presence in, in a specific area and we've seen that before where uh, some of our opposition tried to um, even threatened uh, your personnel and people trying to intimidate at the gate and so on and those are people that we were sitting around the table with so it's it's very difficult because you've got all these factions and that is that 
that there is more or less prophecy in South Africa and in the rest of the world where a brother fights brother. And, and we've got a situation where we really have to be very wise and ask God for his protection and his wisdom basically on a daily basis. And it's so, as far as administration at our office in Johannesburg is concerned, but even more so on the ground where you, uh, where the t uh, tacky hits the tire, obviously. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I, I mean, when you mention fear, I mean, fear is a huge enemy for our people today. I find it with a lot of people. And perhaps it's age, perhaps it's the benefit of hindsight that we know that God is with us. We've seen it. We carry the testimony. And uh, Penny, I am fearless. I am fearless. We do what we need to do uh, to, the, to our, the best ability. We plan, etc. But we're not going to be intimidated. Uh, God is for us and we will achieve what we set about to achieve. Yes, uh, it's amazing. Now, but just in just in terms of development, uh, I think we can share a, a bit of information regarding. I mean, obviously, we are not only negotiating further ground, but we are at a very, very fast stage of concluding many agreements. Uh, however, we also realise that politics plays a role. Uh, there's basically three large players in the Mokwaland and Northern Cape as far as diamond mining is concerned. It is the state itself in the form of Elex Corp. And, and we know that there's tremendous problems uh, with the Zonda Commission having investigated a lot of what has happened at Elex Corp. Uh, the management worked together to form a company called Elex Corp. Bay Diamonds or something like that, or Ellis Court Diamonds in Johannesburg. You might not know so much about it. I'm pretty much aware because I deal with a lot of dealers in Bedfordview, in Parktown, uh, as well as in Rosebank and, and the rest of Johannesburg. There's about 800 dealers that we have contact with. Uh, some of the larger ones uh, we've done a lot of business with. Now, one of the issues there is corruption is there because you've got poor people and even the management have been poor for a long time and therefore uh, they are vulnerable in terms of payment of large sums of money. So what's happened there and again here um, the Guptas are being blamed for things that have got nothing to do with the Guptas. I've dealt with a General Malloy at the time that wanted to take over our company in 2004, 5 and 6. Uh, that's a history that I've shared with God Blanche at the time. They were not interested in suddenly now they are interested in hindsight to now blame the Guptas because it, it, it suits their political narrative. What we've experienced in Wealth for You at the time, when we were their biggest producer, there, there was blatant dis discrimination when they found out that we were growing rapidly. Now, what we are going to do is grow rapidly in the Makwaland, but there is a change of spirit. And the second largest one would be obviously the beers in in the Northern Cape and Amakwaland, but they are not, or not second largest, I made a mistake there, but the second large entity, sorry, would be the beers. And we know the history of the beers, and I don't want to say too much because we don't want to trample on anybody's toes unnecessarily, but uh, they have withdrawn basically working in Amakwaland specifically, and I, I think it's going to happen in the Northern Cape more and more. They're going to other territories. They've already gone to Angola. They're on their way to Sierra Leone. Uh, we are aware because we've been there recently with Hannes and, and, and our cutters and, and polishers. So, and then obviously we've got transex, and I've just heard that um, there was a bid for transex by the Russians, but they've withdrawn their bid, and that will change a lot of what is happening to transex at the moment. Is there something that you would like to share without obviously harming our relationship on the ground there in Amakulet? You've done a lot of work to build good relationships with all those people, and I must honor you as my brother doing that because I must admit that I couldn't do it in all these years. My approach maybe were too direct, and I think you have got the tremendous advantage of being maybe softer in negotiation, or maybe uh, you've just got the touch. Um, with your background, may I also add, um, I don't want to mention your background in detail, but you, you know what I'm referring to. And, and I can honor you for what you've, what you've achieved in the because I was not able to do that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Benny. Uh, 
thank you. Yes, look, as far as uh, the, call it the withdrawal of De Beers is concerned uh, in this region, and I think wider than just this region, Southern Africa, for the reasons that we know, politics and the more. The fact of the matter is there's a changing of the guards. There's a changing of the guards, and uh, we've got our foot in the door. Uh, as recent as this morning, you're right, I've been in contact with the current CEO of De Beers. There's a amicable relationship. Um, of course, it's not Bura, it's uh, not Afrikaners, but it is upright people in their own way. And we have maintained and built a healthy relationship. Uh, so yes, you're quite right. There's quite a few uh, movements at the moment where in fact, De Beers will release their last uh, remaining and very, let me say, lucrative, valuable permits in this area. And we are right there. So uh, yes, is, is that specific enough, Penny? Yes, I, I, I'm sure obviously uh, everybody would realize uh, that we can't divulge too much information. I have a habit of divulging uh, too much and I think it's wise that at this very stage, at a sensitive stage of them relinquishing their rights, that we don't talk too much about it. We'd rather talk about what we've got in hand and what we've negotiated so far. But it is very encouraging and, uh, you know, I just want to once more um, emphasize the fact that large corporations cannot compete with medium-sized companies uh, like us. It is impossible for them. Their overheads are just pure and simply too high. Rand cost averaging doesn't make sense for them. And that's why they're relinquishing. And as a matter of fact, the only thing that we can be very wary of is the fact that they're relinquishing and not serving as custodians of uh, their buildings and the area and and offenses and, and so on. And we've already seen the attack on some of the beer facilities in Kleinsia. That was very, very sad. Luckily, it was not as bad as I thought initially. My information wasn't quite right on the groups, but uh, you, uh, you've seen it. And, and while well, we had a bit of a difference regarding the approach there, because on the one hand, the beer has really hurt people that, like they've done in the past. But on the other hand, they've also built towns and they also did uh, build some infrastructure. So it's a bit of a mixed emotions that I sometimes feel with some of these larger corporations. But we as a junior mind, are in an ideal situation and maybe you can share some of your discussions with your sorry uh, the, the signal disappeared for a moment uh, maybe you can share without divulging too much are you there are you back yes okay but uh, so maybe you can divulge some of the information with colleagues that you've seen there in terms of what they feel the potential still in the is for a junior miner and how to position yourself in future as such and not build a conglomerate necessarily that would be the equal of the beers and then you might find that you are not uh, mining economically yes look in terms of the resources uh, reports there are still a lot of diamonds on the land obviously with that it comes the politics of the land but for that reason we're working very hard at maintaining a good relationship with uh, obviously the namas and the local uh, people uh, and of course we want to address their reasonable aspirations for mining so uh, once this deal come off much of the lower lying safer to mine areas will be uh, utilized in a way that we will partner with the uh, indigenous people of this area of, of, of Nawakwa land. Uh, but in terms of the geologists and their uh, uh, resources documents, there are still millions of diamonds in under the soil. And we're going to get to them. And of course, we're talking about a very large area, 146,000 hectares where again, we won't only be uh, the uh, permit holders, but we will be the landowners. Uh, and, and believe me, there's benefits uh, in, in that uh, arrangement. Um, 
Okay. And then, of course, there's the marine situation, which when the beers finally leave, which they're planning to do, uh, lots of opportunities there. It's generally believed that two-thirds of all diamonds are actually still in the sea. So, but that's another yes. ball game altogether. Yes, you will remember that that was the reason why Wealthy was formed and we focused on the sea. But however, I must say that I've learned my lesson. I mean, there we've lost a bit of money, especially at the end, about 40 million, although it is a relatively a small operation. Um, you know, we were the biggest at Enexcore at the time. But one of the lessons I've learned is that you can't fight with overheads. You can never fight with overheads and you must make sure that you're as lean as mean and you grow as you produce. You don't grow ahead of yourself. And uh, obviously we're very committed to uh, giving our, our partners a big return, but we will have to continue with, with trade for quite some time until we establish an equilibrium, until we get that breakthrough point the yeah. production of our mines will actually start meeting all the obligations, you know, in terms of giving people a return on investment. All right, that's by the by. I want to touch on something a bit more personal. And how how did you adapt? You've been in England and, and since December you volunteered. And, and may I just say once more, I, I don't even give my brother a salary. He came and he... He volunteered and he wanted to come and make a difference in South Africa. Maybe on that personal level, if you can touch on how it was and the transition now after the seven or eight years, eight years in England, and suddenly in Amakwaland and in that very harsh environment, how are you adapting and how, how are you assimilated by the community there? Benny, I am happy. I'm very happy to be here. And of course, it, it hinged also on our uh, significant other's happiness. My Froki Yael is very happy. And so that, that is, uh, uh, that's so important. Um, we are a close-knit family. Wonderful. So the three boys finally, yes, flew the nest. And I mean, they're not boys anymore. Uh, Yohanan and Noah, our twin sons, are 25 already. And... Uh, but yes, uh, a close-knit family, and it was difficult to, to let go of them. Uh, some of you might know, we homeschooled until they were 15. Benjamin was 13 when for the first time they went to school. And uh, today they've graduated and they're on to do their masters, etc. and they've made us very proud. And of course, as, as parents that homeschooled, we always sat with us. Uh, you know, we weren't quite sure how they will cope once they enter formal education and the proof is in the pudding they top students they at the top of their class they've made us extremely proud and they they're doing what they want to do but yes it's not in south africa it is in england um and yes you know i would say uh a while ago i actually thought to release a little talk about this when people are so quick and ready to criticize those who found it necessary to uh, to leave Afrikaners in South Africa? You know, uh, Bura. Uh, of yes. course, we don't know. We shouldn't judge unless we walk in somebody else's moccasins. And the reality is that some were Absolutely. forced out. But but we are very grateful. I am very grateful that we can be back here, and uh, it's wonderful. So in in short, Penny, to answer that question, very happy to be in the land where we spent some of our best childhood years, of course, at Fort Nolith, where our father was uh, a minister of the word there, spread the fragrance of Jesus all over this area. Uh, and it's good for me to be back. And of course, the other thing is, Penny, we are very busy. I am busy. I, uh, the older I get, the less sleep I need. I think I sleep four, five hours a night, not even five. I don't need a lot of sleep. Maybe that will change again in future. But for the time being, I'm up very early. I'm up late and I'm busy all the time and I enjoy it. Wonderful. Um, uh, we share that in terms of sleeping, uh, maybe sometimes a bit of worry. But one thing I've learned is that that is also the best time to speak to God at night because then your brain is a bit less active. And, uh, and it's the old, uh, not only the old saying, but it's so clear in Scripture that God wants to speak to a sound mind. And sometimes 
We are so active, uh, actively um, propagating our own dreams and plans that God has to interfere at night and actually get us to a point where we're very quiet. Yes. Well, you'll remember three o'clock in the morning. Uh, so Ma used to tell us three o'clock. She can set a, a clock, and she didn't. But Pa would be up, and that was his appointment with the Lord. So <laughs> yes. Absolutely, we've got the we've got the example and the example in in the what would what would you say to people that fear their future in this country at the moment, just from a a broad perspective? Because there's enough reason, as I've stated in the previous video, that we have to be very realistic in terms of what's happening. But I mean, compared to England, is there comparisons that you can draw in terms of what they're doing right and we wrong and we doing right and they wrong? You've had the exposure now for quite some time. Look, you've got to give credit where credit is due. The fact is that for the most part, England, the UK is a law abiding society. It's also uh, a very decent society. When you drive on the roads, etc., the courtesy that they extend to other motorists, you, you have to acknowledge it. So, uh, but yes, of course, it's old world. They're very set in their ways, so they're not open for new ideas, etc. And we who are from the new world and therefore have more in common with uh, the Americans who are also pioneers, uh, you know, uh, we don't really on a certain level get along with the English. But again, it's a law abiding society. And if we can gear ourselves again to make no provision for lawlessness and to walk upright, yeah. because at the end of the day, uh, the wheel turn and God gives to, of course, his beloved in the sleep who pleases him and who live uprightly and speak truthfully to his neighbor. We know these scriptures. They are as sure as gravitation, uh, you know, hold me to the surface of the earth here today. It works. Uh, so, yes, Benny, I think that we can we, we, we can really set our sights on also being law abiding, but bold and fearless and go for it and of course the enemy cower uh when you walk in this manner no matter who they are and this is Absolutely. back to why i said earlier we can act without fear uh ramaphosa whoever has set themselves up uh you know uh they are no match for god and uh, we don't need to fear them we don't need to fear the anc we don't need to fear malema and the you know well, we just go along and do our thing, do it diligently, and Absolutely. as I say, walk uprightly, and the rewards will follow. Absolutely. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Boot? I've, I've, I've taken a lot of your times, maybe about your staff, maybe ab about your plans immediately, maybe something that we can get excited about, maybe just in passing. Uh, yes, I must acknowledge the team. Right down from Bucks, second in charge, then the mine managers, that's Johannes Libber in, uh, uh, and Stefan Rothner, uh, Peter van der Merwe, Peter as ons aankoper, the personeel by the Springbok kantoor, Samantha, I mean, uh, ons sorteerders op die oomlik, so, so as wat ons productie opgaan, is daar toenemend druk op ons tafels, ons het uh, ses persoon, a hands off sorteer faciliteit but no it will be is om for us to bow in the car ons is opgewonde daar oor ehm uh, dat's baie druk hulle sorteer vir seker omtrent 9 10 ure selfs per dag op op hierdie stadium ja. so eh uh, uh, ja. ons moet daar nuwe aanstellings maak maar dis natuurlik lekker uh, en die diamante is daar so almal is positief dat's 'n baie goeie gesintheid op die oomblik by die myn Amal hier so goeie uh, verhoudings met mekaar, ook ons operateers, uh, ons kyk na hulle, ons het nou weer een fancy stoof uh, wat afgelever word vandag, dat hulle goed eet, ons het een nieuwe area onder dak gesit en hy word uitgever vandag, hulle het goeie beddens waarop hulle slaap, daar is een goeie atmosfeer hier op die myn. Ach, wonderlijk, Boeta. Nee, ek kan net vir, van hierdie kant af vir jou baie, baie dankie sê vir jou en jou mense. Jy het een baie, baie groot verskil gemaakt, Bix. Natuurlijk, ons kom al jare saam. Uh, eindelijk ons en sy, sy pa, sy familie, sy pa, 
uh, ze, ze dood, denk ik, is in hierdie week, uh, was het uh, die datum geweest, een klomp jaar geleden, ik kan niet precies onthou nie, maar hy het ook bij ons in Wealth for You boote gebouw, hy was by Pani gemeente as een steenpilaar, so daar is baie dik bande wat hardloop uh, op die main, en, en daar goed is baie belangrijk vanuit de geestelike perspektief, because uh, our fight is definitely a spiritual war, war and not only in the physical. Boeta, ja, dit was geweldig lekker om met jou te praat. Ek dink die mense dit baie geniet en uh, as daar nie nog iets is nie, dan, dan sê ons eerst baie vir die mense en ons, uh, ons bid vir elke en ons bid vir vrede vir julle daar, ons bid die sien van die jaren oor julle en baie dankie dat jy een voorbeeld is van een godsman wat, wat die pad recht loop daar. Ek waardeer het baie. Dankie Penny, lekker naweg vir jou en vir allemaal. Baie dankie Boeta. Tata, yes. Bye. Bye.